As we move forward with our capital campaign, we thought it was a good idea to be able to give those who cannot come on site to actually see the, some of the necessary uh, renovations and improvements that our campaign will be covering. Uh, we thank you for uh, being a part of the campaign and uh, we hope that you enjoy our little visual uh, display of all of the various things that need to happen. And so as you can see, we have moved to the Worship Center, which is one of the primary components of our capital campaign. I'm going to turn it over to Paul Franz, who will explain the, need, the uh, needed re renovations in this space. The Worship Center is single pane glass with 46 plus year old seals, which are in many cases broken. Further adding to this issue, we have a sliding door system, which is no longer functional, nor is it any longer on track in many places. Hence, if we look closely, you will see the tape throughout the worship center trying to alleviate the cracks through which we lose a lot of heat in the winter or cooling in the summer. In essence, we could say we are currently taping our system together. Our goal is to replace this class with the same type high efficient system as installed in the connector. That said, we are finalizing the placement of doors, or should I say openings, which will allow for us to connect with our surrounding environment at certain times of the year. In addition, there are interior electrical, lighting, and HVAC work, which needs to be done in the worship center. A good example of the tape holding the sliding doors together is right here. Now we transition to another phase of our renovations, the community center, which you will see needs lots of tender, loving care. My name is Tom Frank, uh, Buildings and Facilities, and we're in the community center, and we just wanted to show you some of the issues we're having here and some of the projects that uh, will be involved in the capital campaign. First of all are the skylights. Now, while these are double pane glass, um, they have been compromised. This building, by the way, was built in the mid 80s. So 35 years old, as you can see, they have been compromised and we're getting the moisture inside between the panes of glass. Um, so these all need to be redone. This building hasn't been painted in at least 15 years. Next item is the flooring. This parquet flooring is original to the building, so again, it is 35 years old. So we'll be looking at replacing all the wood flooring, the parquet, and also the carpeting. This is skylight number two. As you can see, it's been compromised again. So um, going to replace the glass and the skylight. And then we're also looking at painting all of the community center here. Uh, we're also looking at replacing the ceiling tiles that, as you can see, uh, have been water stained. And I counted at least four different types of ceiling tiles that have been replaced over the years. Uh, we are also looking at adding insulation above the grid work. There's no insulation presently from the ceiling tiles to the roof of the building. So this will also help with our heating and cooling, but also with soundproofing. As you can see, this carpet is stained in many areas, and we are looking at replacing all the carpet in the community center also. Setting up our current divider system offers many challenges, including uh, the weight of the doors, how difficult it is to push them around, and our new system will also offer some advantages with additional soundproofing. Our current wall panels have a lot of drag to them and it makes it difficult uh, to pull them out. When the current sections are being assembled, the locking mechanism doesn't, uh, doesn't work like it's supposed to. Our 
current storage facilities don't offer much flexibility and our new ones are going to have a lot more ease of access and more configurability probably also have some modules that will be easy to pull in and out for accessibility. So now you've seen many of the renovations that we're hoping to achieve with our capital campaign funds in the community center. But in addition to that, we would like to uh, add the flexibility of allowing some additional space for what we are calling hybrid meeting space that will accommodate in-person as well as virtual uh, gatherings uh, for some of our programming here at Epiphany. And part of one of those sites will be here in the community center. So that will be an additional improvement uh, to our space. Now we come to another phase of our renovation projects here at Epiphany, our beloved Epiphany House, which dates to back to 1915, a 106 year old structure that was originally used as a summer home. And as we go through the facility, you will see uh, many needs for continued aesthetical improvements with painting uh, and the like, but we have some, some important uh, serious items that we need to address as well. So as you well know, Epiphany House is used as our office building, as well as space for meetings. Our, the living room and the dining room are both areas where we have gatherings for formation and committee meetings uh, at various times during each week. So this space is the kitchen, uh, which gets used by the staff to eat their lunch and any of the meals that they may be on site to use. But we also use this space as our welcoming uh, breakfast for our newcomers to the parish. Uh, you'll notice that it is rather dated, uh, some older cabinetry, uh, and the wallpaper in here, I'm pretty sure I was told was installed when Father Cass was pastor here 30 years ago. Uh, so we'd like to just do some updating and uh, a little bit of uh, uh, sprucing it up a little bit. Here you will notice our boiler that is used to heat our office building with steam. It dates back to the early 1970s. We are hoping to replace this whole unit and put in a more energy efficient uh, HVAC system in the offices. We showed you the boiler that was installed in the early 1970s. This is how it gets to the office through these radiators that uh, warm some of the offices and some of the offices don't get warm. But nonetheless, uh, this is a system and hopefully we'll be able to remove these with the new HVAC system. Also, you'll note that again, uh, the windows in the office space uh, are single pane glass windows with a single pane storm system on the exterior as well. And we're hoping to address that as well to help make the building more energy efficient. So one of the beautiful features of Epiphany House is on the back side of the house is a whole series of French doors uh, giving access to the great outdoors. And it lets the great outdoors in pretty easily. So uh, as you can see, we only have a single pane uh, storm window system that's protecting the French doors, which are also single pane, coming in. We do want to maintain the aesthetics of the, the French doors, but we do need to look at some system that's going to help us uh, contain the heat and manage the temperature of the building better. We're at the lighthouse now, which is our last stop today. And similar to the other buildings, we have a need here for some additional glass to be replaced, the floor coverings, some of the wall treatments, uh, and furniture, as well as uh, some of the kitchen appliances. To conclude, we just want to thank you for uh, being a part of our parish. We want to thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, listen to our case for our campaign. We hope that after prayerful consideration you will uh, be willing to make a, a contribution and to assist us in achieving our goals in updating and renovating our facilities so that we are here for another 50 years serving uh, our community and uh, all of the various ministries that we provide in our outreach to others. Thank you very much for your time.